This is uh, video one for epoxy resins for thermoset resin lectures. We will be covering raw materials, polymerization methods, and different types of epoxy resins in this lecture. So we're going to talk about the oxygen linkage that's present, the ether, the very special ether that's present in epoxy resins, um, the role of epoxy resins as engineering thermosets, that characteristic ring in epoxy resins, um, the taffy process for DGEBA epoxies, types of raw materials for uh, epoxy resins, different types of epoxy resins, catalysts and cross-linking agents uh, that cure the epoxy uh, resins, roles of fillers and additives, uh, and, in, and in formulation of epoxy resins, properties, and then application areas of epoxy resins. So, to start off with a little history. Epoxy resins were first or epoxy compounds, I should say, were first synthesized as early as 1891, but the first commercial attempts to prepare these resins uh, from epichlorohydrin, which is what DGEBA is made from, were made in 1927 in the United States, and the first synthesis of bisphenol A-based epoxy resins was in 1936. The credit between uh, is shared between two scientists, uh, Dr. Kasten in Switzerland and Dr. Greenlee in the United States. Kasten hardened them with phthalic anhydride, and uh, Greenlee developed these as a binding agent for coatings that were alkali resistant. So they weren't working together, but they kind of came up with this simultaneously. Kasten's work was licensed by SIBA in Switzerland, and it is one of the three major epoxy resin producers worldwide. Uh, in the 1990s, uh, SIBA became Advanced Materials as a part of Huntsman Corporation in the U.S. Greenlee's work was for DeVoe Reynolds in the United States, and that was sold to Shell Chemical, which was then sold to Momentive Specialty Chemical, and then Momentive was known as Hexion, Resolution Polymers, and others. So um, <clears throat> the evolution of the corporate connection of epoxy resins has continued over many years. Epoxy resins are also known as polyepoxides, and they're a class of resins that contain an epoxide group, which is a special ether group. And epoxy resins can either be reacted through catalytic homopolymerization or through a very wide range of co-reactants. Uh, those are polyfunctional amines, acids and anhydrides, and phenols, alcohols, and thiols. Co-reactants are often known as hardeners or curatives. So catalytic homopolymerization is where catalysts come in, and hardeners or curatives are participate as co-reactants, and I'll talk about that a little bit further. When you're cross-linking these, it's commonly known as curing, as with all thermosets. The reaction of polyepoxides with themselves or hardeners form a thermosetting polymer, and the resulting thermoset has strong mechanical properties and high temperature and chemical resistance. Epoxies have a very wide range of applications. They're very good for coatings. They're often used in electronic and electrical components, high tension electrical insulators, fiber reinforced plastic materials, and structural adhesives. So that characteristic group, the epoxy group, so that comes from two different words, the Greek prefix, ep, prefix epi, which means over or between, and the English suffix oxy, which means oxygen. So epoxy means oxygen between compounds. Um, epoxies themselves have a characteristic white to cream color, and they are usually thermosetting viscous liquids or brittle solids in their unmodified form. Epoxy, epoxies are characterized by these particular groups here. This is known as an oxirane ring. It's also known as an ethoxylene group or an epoxide group. So this is an oxirane. If you put this extra methyl group here with other R groups attached, that becomes a glycetyl ring. So there is a distinction to be made between those two groups, the oxirane group and the glycetyl group. Epoxy resins are versatile due to the ability of that oxirane ring to react with very different types of substrates. So when you open up those rings, you get a lot of hydroxyl groups. Hydroxyl groups like to interact with a lot of surfaces. Epoxies are mostly derived from a condensation reaction between epichlorohydrin and bisphenol A. This takes, presence, takes place in the presence of an alkaline catalyst like sodium hydroxide, and the resulting product is DGEBA. Uh, that stands for diglycetyl ether of bisphenol A, and that is also known as the taffy process. And that taffy process is the main polymerization method for DGEBA resins. The alkaline catalyst that's present in that reaction does two things. It opens the oxirane ring, and it dehydrohalogenates the epichlorohydrin. So here are your raw materials. This is epichlorohydrin, right here, and this is bisphenol A. 
when you put them in the presence of sodium hydroxide, so here's epichlorohydrin, here's bisphenol A, they react together to create this particular type of polymer. It has functional epoxy groups on the end, where in the middle it has these opened up epoxies that have hydroxyl functionality, they're pendant groups. The reason it's called the taffy process is because the product is an emulsion of the resin and the sodium salt and it forms a putty-like or taffy-like form. This process is carried out for 100 degrees Celsius for two to three hours. Oftentimes, toluene is used to separate the resin from the sodium salt. The resin will dissolve in the toluene, the sodium salt won't. Um, the salt is filtered out and removed by distillation. Uh, they use the boiling point of toluene to uh, facilitate that distillation. The resin product is a viscous liquid, which is about 30% resin. The product is then dried by vacuum heating at 150 Celsius, cooled, crushed, and bagged. Pure, TG, pure DGEBA is a solid with a melting point of about 43 Celsius. DGEBA that comes from the taffy process has a melting point of about 70 Celsius. The main form of epoxy resins are the DGEBA based resins, but there are other forms of resins. One is an epoxy Novolac resin. This is produced uh, by the use of hydroxyl groups of a phenolic resin in place of bisphenol A. This gives you faster curing rates than DGEBA, a higher degree of cross-linking, better thermal stability, better chemical resistance than bisphenol A-based epoxy resins. It also, ref it also referred to as an epoxidized phenol formaldehyde Novolac. Typically, these have seven or more epoxy groups per molecule, lots of cross-linking capable, and, it's com and, and that seven groups is compared to only two groups uh, that are available on DGEBA. So uh, you can get much more highly cross-linked species from an epoxy Novolac. You also have aliphatic epoxy resins. Uh, DGEB-based epox epoxies are, uh, have aromatic groups. You can also do that with aliphatics. Epoxidized oils um, can be made, so you can have acyclic uh, epoxidized vegetable oils. You can also do cycloaliphatic epoxies that contain one or more cycloaliphatic rings. In other words, these rings here don't have unsaturation, um, to which that oxyrene is fused. Uh, both are formed by the reaction of a per acid, such as per acetic acid. So this is how that is accomplished. So paracetic acid is reacted with an unsaturated compound, and what you get from that is an epoxidized compound and acetic acid. The advantages of an aliphatic epoxy resin is they have low viscosity at room temperature and significantly higher temperature resistance than aromatic uh, epoxy resins. They have better electrical properties at high temperature compared to glycetyl aliphatic epoxy resins. Um, the absence of chlorine, since they don't use any epichlorohydrin, is nice in the manufacturing process, and this is useful for electronic applications such as encapsulation of LEDs. Disadvantages of these is that the room temperature reactivity is rather low compared to other classes of epoxy resins, um, and you usually have to do high temperature curing using suitable accelerators in order to get these to cure properly. Uh, here's an example of a glycetyl epoxy resin, so this is alcohol with epichlorohydrin. So uh, you can react epichlorohydrin with an alcohol to get, to get this species. Uh, you can uh, remove that OH group again to recover the epoxy ring. And these glycetyl epoxy resins are typically formed by the reaction of epichlorohydrin with an aliphatic alcohol or polyol uh, to give a glycetyl ether or an aliphatic carboxylic acid to give a glycetyl ester. Uh, the reaction is normally done in the presence of alkali, such as sodium hydroxide. Uh, the resulting resins may be monofunctional, difunctional, or higher functionality, depending on uh, your starting material. Resins typically display low viscosity at room temperature, and these are often used as reactive diluents in other epoxy resins. So they modify or reduce the viscosity of other epoxy resins. So if you've ever heard the term modified epoxy resin, it denotes these viscosity-lowering reactive diluents, these glycetyl epoxy resins. They're also used with other epoxide ingredients, um, with anhydrides and curing agents, uh, for the use of manufactured molded objects, and they're the main use of diglycetyl esters in high voltage insulators. They're also phenoxy resins, and the main thing about this is you don't see any epoxide groups, but these are epoxy resins, known as phenoxies. These are relatively new. They are polyhydroxy ethers based upon bisphenol A and epichlorohydrin with sodium hydroxide in DMSO as a catalyst. Unlike other epoxies, phenoxies don't have any epoxy groups. They are strongly polar materials and they are thermoplastic rather than thermosetting in nature. Uh, 
their most important characteristic is that they are highly ductile or flexible, and they are chemically stable because of that ether structure in the backbone. The phenoxies contain many free, many free hydroxyl groups, and this facilitates their cross-linking with isocyanates and hydrides, triazines and melamine, if you wanted to take them further and cross-link them. But they are freestanding uh, thermoplastic materials. Their mechanical strength is not temperature dependent. They are amorphous and polar in nature. They have low resistance to polar solvents, like heat ketones. Uh, they're often used as adhesives and coatings. Again, they are thermoplastic in nature. And because they're thermoplastic, you can process these by traditional thermoplastic machinery, like injection molding, blow molding, and extrusion, unlike DGEBA-based epoxies. Here are a few other forms of epoxy resins. You have some hydantoin resins. That's this structure here. Tetraglycetyl methylene dianalin. So this is aniline right here. This is four or tetraglycetyl groups. And then you have epoxy silicone hybrids. So you have a silicone backbone with epoxies that cap that uh, polysiloxane. So this is the first of uh, two epoxy resin uh, lectures. You'll answer a few questions after this one and move on to the next lecture.